Now, it's my pleasure to um, introduce to you Martin Burns, the General Manager uh, for Racing uh, and Equine Welfare at New Zealand Thoroughbred Racing. Martin. And uh, thanks for your introduction. Um, and for the opportunity to share with you all today a New Zealand uh, perspective on enhancing thoroughbred welfare and the partnerships and approach that we've adopted. Uh, it's, it's an honour to speak at this assembly and I congratulate Julie and fellow organisers for having um, an interesting and critical topics for our very equine pursuits and I'm very pleased to be a part. Um, in my, presenta oh, thanks. Thanks, in my presentation today, um, I'll outline NZTO's involvement approach to thoroughbred welfare and the partnerships approach that we've been so adopted. Just to touch on this briefly. Um, horsemanship and an affinity to horses are long standing traditions in New Zealand, which, like Australia, is a secular nation and was developed with horses as a backbone of agriculture, transport and military. Um, New Zealand remains a significantly rural based economy. With a strong and broad Christian community in New Zealand, often track thoroughbreds have a good chance of finding an active, well cared for future in a variety of circumstances. However, whilst these favourable conditions persist, we're also keenly aware of the emergence of adverse public perceptions of racing and the risk of racing social license topic which is central to our meeting here. Uh, it's also just well I've got the opportunity interesting to briefly note that animal sentience is defined in legislation in New Zealand. Um, how this impacts interpretation of law is yet to be resolved or tested. Um, but from NZTR's point of view we simply adopted the concept of sentience of horses as being self-evident. Um, the expressiveness of mood and health of the horse is to its advantage in reinforcing the horse and human bond and for ensuring our better care for its needs. Uh, my presentation today will follow the structure shown here, uh, which largely reflects a sequence of work NZTR, New Zealand Club Red Racing, has undertaken. Recognition of the concepts of relevance, the relevance to public that is, legitimacy and social license, our initial review of thoroughbred welfare, how we will enhance welfare through regulation and our partnerships approach. Uh, bad news sells, obviously, um, that's how the media works. Bad news stories are badly handled for fuel negative media coverage and erode public confidence and trust in racing. The loss of public support will lead to the loss of political support and also leads to fewer people with an open mind to future participation as owners of racehorses, race day attendees or punters. There's a spectrum of thought of course. Many with minds made up and can't be convinced. The coalition against horse racing safe Peter is an example. Um, whereas uh, well, so some practices in racing are, by these groups, seen uh, trade as horrible, um, whereas we in the industry agree these have been everyday activities and, and therefore acceptable. Um, so there's a divergence of view there. Um, and obviously a big proportion of population remains in the middle ground with passive or accepting views of racing. In New Zealand we've been relatively lucky. Uh, we have minimal um, issues that have sort of um, provoked public debate um, and that's, we've seen that has been the best time to act positively and start to tell our story about thoroughbred welfare so that's um, a journey that we're still progressing through um, it's taken a couple of years but it's not very sort of um, inactivity it's, it's because it's important and um, we you know, need to think through in a very considered way and, and seek the views of people who have an interest uh, it's our objective to build or maintain credibility and trust in racing by being transparent and truthful, having a willingness to change where needed, demonstrating, supporting and encouraging best practice, 
and to collect and update statistics and provide positive communications. Our aim also is to develop a universal goal within the industry in ensuring that welfare matters are addressed and handled well today and in the future. Having recognised the context and general objectives, in 2017, NZTR undertook a comprehensive review of thoroughbred welfare, which is called an, an, an initial review because I don't think these things ever end. And this review included a broad consultation of interested parties, both within and outside the racing and breeding communities. It took us a period of about eight or nine months where we sought and obtained authoritative external support and influential advocates also within our industry. <coughs> Through this, to ensure a broad industry support for various initiatives. This is a bit of a muddle, uh, so I don't expect you to be able to read all of these groups, but this just demonstrates, I suppose, the network that we have uh, utilised within New Zealand. Um, in, in Australia, you'll have equivalents in a lot of areas. Um, but and I suppose the most important ones from our point of view, the New Zealand Equine Health Association, which is in the centre here, um, is a grouping of um, equine communities. Uh, we represent, I also um, sit on that body along with Tony Parsons at the back there, who sits there on the hand of Christian Sports New Zealand. Um, together we um, act as a group where we engage with government and also um, express, I suppose, uh, equine health and welfare issues for the public. Um, also critical are uh, the New Zealand Equine Veterinary Association, of course. Um, Animal Behaviour and Welfare Consultant Committee, which is down the bottom right there. That's, that's where I sort of gained, I suppose, my first impressions of uh, the, the meanings of social licence and also was recommended and introduced to um, David as well. So that's a grouping of um, animal-related industries or research bodies um, and, and the government, our ministry. Ministry of Primary Industries, we <laughs> were twice a year to get together as a forum and discuss and share ideas around animal welfare. And uh, the other one down there, the National Animal Welfare Advisory Committee, which is a, um, a semi government body which is set up to advise the minister. So that, those areas um, are, are the critical ones, I suppose, in terms of, um, of having authoritative um, groupings that um, assist their, their aims. Um, so this has not only provided us with a necessarily broad range of perspectives, it's enabled us, EZTR, as a relatively small organisation, to leverage the skills and resources of others with whom we can identify and share a common goal in the welfare of the horse. Importantly, and in the context of this conference, in the, in the process, NZTR also recognised that a robust and widely accepted basis for animal welfare would enhance understanding and acceptance of future thoroughbred welfare rules and guidelines. And this guided us to engage with Professor Mallet. So you're getting a bit of a feel for our journey here. Um, this diagram, which was, I was first exposed to through that um, Animal Behaviour Consultative Committee, uh, is one that I find really easy to understand and easy for me to express um, a conversation around social license. Um, and that's cited there that Ian Thompson and Robert Petulia uh, <coughs> pronounce it right. Um, so this really assists in underpinning the future approval, or at least the legitimacy of racing. So having that understanding of acceptance, approval, or at the very least, a legitimacy in terms of what we do as an industry. Central to everything, I suppose, is a vision. Our vision for thoroughbred welfare, as shown above, is anchored on one more, uh, sorry, modern animal welfare concepts, i.e. a good life, as the ideal, and is pragmatic to the realities of racing, breeding, and retirement. And I suppose it reflects, as David said earlier today, it's not the elimination of issues, but it's minimising those that affect the horse in, in a negative way. Our initial report covered a lot of ground, um, but in the context of social licence, perhaps unsurprisingly around the background issues that are familiar. 
issues and fatalities and relate. So, um, so much to these, EZTR provides support for academic research and um, sharing of results and knowledge that arises. Um, and we also find that we need to communicate that while um, most injuries are relatively minor and treatable, um, there needs to be an understanding of the need for euthanasia where serious injuries occur. <coughs> it's also important to recognise the challenge in mitigating the higher incidences of injuries and fatal consequent fatalities in jumps racing. So that there's a lot of uh, tactics that uh, we engage in around here. The WIP and its use in racing. Um, uh, personally, and I, I think this is shared with others in their organisation, uh, I expect that um, jockeys would continue to ride with the whip in hand, but uh, also we expect that over time further restrictions in the use of the whip must uh, be expected and should progress, I suppose, in tandem with shifts in riding skills and techniques. Um, and again, that's a story that we need to be able to express in, in a coherent way when we're speaking to the public about it. Uh, finally, neglect. Um, well, NCTR would have a partnership with SBCA New Zealand when neglect is discovered. Really, it's a question of how to reduce the likelihood of neglect um, and tactics to check this effective through education and other um, supports. Um, other key issues are then quite not directly linked to the horse but are relevant to the guardianship of the thoroughbred population. NZTR is therefore enhancing our rules of racing um, by including uh, wealth, explicit welfare obligations um, and enhancements to yeah, data capture to best ensure traceability from following to death or retirement. Introduction of the concept of an accountable person, this defined person being the person responsible for the welfare of the thoroughbred, including the duty of care and decisions relating to retirement and rehoming of the horse. <coughs> the rules will also empower NZTR and their stewards to determine and direct actions that must take place to remedy any apparent welfare <coughs> compromises and to lay thoroughbred welfare charges as warranted. Critical to these powers will be a robust and widely understandable set of thoroughbred welfare guidelines. <coughs> So, how are we developing our thoroughbred welfare guidelines? Um, this should now be increasingly familiar because the topic of our assembly now. Um, horse welfare and peak performance are closely connected. High welfare standards benefit both the individual horse as well as the industry and those among us that work in thoroughbred racing or just enjoy racing as a sport. A structured way of thinking provides a stronger foundation. As indicated earlier, and my basis for being here, we concluded that it would be appropriate and practical to adopt the five domains model as the basis for thoroughbred welfare guidelines. Whilst thoroughbreds are high value animals, they are trained as elite athletes, there are some compromises <coughs> on horses' welfare. The five domains welfare framework acknowledges that on balance and across the five welfare aims and provisions, the horse can and must be provided with a life worth living. At present, our welfare guidelines are reasonably well advanced in drafting and pending final review by an expert panel led by David later this month will be released at, um, in March for a general industry consultation. This slide describes the general scope and structure of these guidelines. There are minimum acceptable welfare standards which provide measure for determining whether a person in charge of the horse is failing to meet NZTR's expectations for the care of thoroughbreds. It's important to note that these are higher standards than those are enforced under the New Zealand's Animal Welfare Act. Um, we found in practice that there's been the you know, rare instance where um, SPCA or NPA um, inspectors would assess the horses and find that they are they meet, I suppose, the, the minimum standards under the Animal Welfare Act, but we within the industry um, assessing those same horses, we are comfortable with that and, found, and you know, look at those, those standards. There should be a higher standard, so our guidelines will set a higher standard that um, people involved 
thoroughbreds um, industry must um, meet as a minimum. So in this way, these guidelines provide a basis for enforcement. So to enforce, you need to have something that you can measure again. Um, so enforcement of increased levels of obligation for the accountable persons under the rules for racing. NZTR's guidelines will have the following elements. Uh, they have an explanation of provisions and welfare aims, detailing these enforceable minimum standards, <coughs> and as well as that, desired optimal standards. So those are the ones that progress it from, I guess, a life worth living to a good life. So that they, both of those um, thresholds, I guess, are described. And they're also described according to the life stage of the horse. So whether they're foals or juveniles, race horses, brood mares or retired. Um, and I guess it's also um, relevant, it's also, that, as David indicated earlier today, there's a, uh, thoughts and context around um, when you know, euthanasia is the right um, uh, decision in regards to an individual horse. Uh, so once NZTR's welfare guidelines are completed, we'll be very, very happy to share these with anyone in the group so they can use those as um, a source of ideas. Um, back to the slide. Um, I guess moving from our, our development of the, the guidelines and the use of the five domains, um, just really want to re-emphasise, I guess, the partnerships approach that NZTR has taken. Not just for the de definition of issues and strategy, but also as it provides for us um, a significant amount of leverage by gaining for others their willingness to share their knowledge, their very passions, their enthusiasm and energy, and their, and pretty importantly, their people and capability. And I encourage everyone here to, to think about the networks and to utilise them as well. By um, reaching out and harnessing your networks, you'll not only advance your welfare goals more effectively, you'll also develop a network of trusted relationships, <coughs> advocates for, for legitimacy, and, will, and, and people who will, I guess, in, enhance your social life. <coughs> so um, you all know your own networks, and your networks can develop in this room as well. So take this opportunity if you can. Um, in terms of partnerships, um, speaking more specifically to aftercare initiatives, the general goal that we have is to promote the versatility of the thoroughbred. So we're not, um, as a body, we don't retire horses and put them on a retirement farm. Um, so by promoting the versatility of the thoroughbreds, it's um, attractive to increase the demand for retired thoroughbreds and, the, and also reduce the potential for neglect. Uh, the key partner in this is a not-for-profit group called Beyond the Barriers. Uh, the goals of our partnership are to promote the versatility of the therapy as a sport horse, delivery of education, particularly through horse and rider clinics, promotion and management of therapy specific sport horse events, support for rehomers, and promotion of activities through social media. <coughs> NZTR also partners with Equestrian Sports New Zealand and in 2014 jointly conceived and launched the Thoroughbreds and Equestrian Sports Series, simply known as TIES. Prizes are awarded to the Thoroughbred that's best performed across the full equestrian season in the classes of, in the classes of eventing, dressage and jumping and show hunting. Compared to War Bloods, it's accepted and does opt to show that off-the-track Thoroughbreds provide a cheap and yet very competitive sport horse. The Thai series is a very effective promotional event and has a great following in the equestrian community. A similar partnership has been established with the New Zealand Show Horse Council. Like Thai's, the off the track show horse series is awarded to the best thoroughbred in class across the seas and under the components, under the saddle or fashion in the field's lead. As I explained earlier, whilst off the track thoroughbreds in New Zealand have a good chance of securing an active and well cared for second career, this isn't guaranteed. And as any of us is aware, neglect can occur for a variety of or combination of reasons, whether it be financial, mental or physical health or hoarding. NZTR has therefore developed a relationship with the SPCA. 
a key component of this is active assistance with rescue of thoroughbreds found in the state of neglect. There have been three such incidents in the last three years, one of which involved the number of years of produced gold. Whilst NZTR's direct financial support has been important, it has been at the access that we provide to skilled people, resource facilities, and the racing community's network of fosterers and potential rehomers that have proven most, most beneficial and appreciated by the SBCA. This close relationship has meant that thoroughbreds concerned were rehabilitated successfully and there was no adverse media attention. Um, New Zealand's also, uh, NZTR is also a foundation partner of the uh, New Zealand Horse Ambulance Trust. Um, yeah, it's a registered charitable trust that was set up a couple of years. Um, I'm, I'm one of five trustees, three of which are from racing and there's uh, two equine vets. And we aim to extend activities into the sport horse and pleasure sectors and in the horse rescue. So um, currently we've got funds raised for about six ambulances, but we're aiming for 10. Um, and there's the first one. It's, um, it's designed probably not unfamiliar, but the whole um, ambulance drops to the ground. It's got walk on, walk off out the front. Um, it's a bit of a plug here, but um, if anyone <coughs> in your uh, various groups have a need for an ambulance, then uh, the Horse Ambulance Trust has a relationship with the manufacturer, so we can set you up with the, uh, <laughs> a horse ambulance. But I, I don't know what they cost elsewhere, but um, you know, you'll probably find that these are pretty affordable and they are capable of decent equipment. Um, so anyway, let me know if you're interested. Um, so I suppose just to wrap up or repeat the points, um, it, like the ability to leverage through partnerships has just proven to be so useful to us um, because it, it is necessary for uh, working with people who have the common goal and welfare of the horse. Um, the leverage that you get through these other personnel will definitely help not only the practical objectives but it will help to build up a reserve of trust and understanding which will be hugely valuable in terms of your social license. It also means that you're likely to become more quickly aware of address issues um, and welfare. Um, hopefully, instead of rather than um, rather than them becoming uh, of media interest. Um, my last words of advice, I suppose, is make sure that these relationships stay active and enduring through regular meetings um, and where relevant, having written agreements or undertakings. Uh, the more time that you put into these relationships, the more rewarding and effective that they'll become. Well, thanks for your time and attention today. Um, I'm pleased to answer any questions that people may have either now or any time over the next couple of days. And I look forward to hearing all your perspectives and one opportunity to sort of network. Um, wish you all the best in your own endeavours and your enjoyment of the rest of this event. Thank you.